Hey everybody, welcome to the second module. Uh, in this video, I just want to go over the procedure and background as well as kind of review some of the topics that we discussed last week. So with that, let's share my screen here. So here's the background and procedure uh, for this week. Uh, just looking back on the Canvas page, right now we just have the second module here posted and the background procedure uh, quiz two, which is just a review of last week's discussion and a submission portal for report two here. But this document that I'm going over is this background procedure two, and you're free to download it and play along. So this week we're going to be looking at uh, node voltage method, uh, superposition method and equivalent circuits. Uh, namely just the Thevenin and equivalent, if you have heard about that at all. So here are some definitions. Um, I'll let you read through that, or it might get a little confusing is where I talk about this linear system and this nomenclature might be a little um, unfamiliar for those who are not formally trained in mathematics, I guess. So this says, a linear system is described by some operator H that maps X to Y with properties of homogeneity and superposition. Right, so whenever you see this uh, semicolon and then some letter, right arrow, and then another letter, then it's just mean it's just a linear map. Um, well, I, I guess more of just a map, not necessarily linear. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about superposition, I guess, since these might be a little confusing. So superposition says if we have some, some operator H, and if you send H, A, and B, sorry, if you send H, A, put A into H, then H maps that to B. And similarly, if you send C into H, out comes D. And in order for superposition to hold, we can send A plus C into H, and out comes B plus D. Um, all right, so A and C can be any kind of arbitrary objects, but we're mostly interested in a tuple of, um, of values, right? So some coordinates, maybe A is uh, some kind of X0, X1, all the way up to Xn. Right? So it's a list of these inputs, and maybe C is this list of outputs, or sorry, second inputs, so maybe x0 prime, x1 prime, xn prime. And so we send in a list of these outputs, we add them together, then out comes their sum. And that is only true for linear systems and, well, systems that hold to superposition. Uh, so here I define the conductance, and it just kind of makes it easier to add up when you have a set of parallel resistors. Uh, here's a discussion of a load. All right, so a load, well, we usually have some kind of system and we want to transfer some kind of energy into something, right? So suppose we have some kind of uh, power supply maybe. Well, we want to send a certain amount of voltage or current into that power supply or out of that power supply into some load. And well, that's just what a load is, right? So it's some kind of target for power delivery or any kind of end goal of our system, right? So shorting something, right? If I have a power supply and I short it out, well, I just tie these two together. But if I open it up, I remove this wire, maybe add some terminals here. And this is an open, right? So there's the absence of a wire is kind of this infinite resistance, right? So it's not, there's no current that's flowing through it. But if there's a short, 
then all of the current in the system should be going through that path. And here's just a discussion on Thevenin. Right, so Thevenin says that we can take any linear electrical network, any kind of mess of sources and resistors, and we can condense that into just a voltage source and a resistor. Right, so some Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance. And the superposition theorem says that any circuit can be analyzed by summing the responses of individual power sources. And we'll we'll get into that a little bit uh, with the example here. Um, so here are just the algorithms for the three different methods that we have. If having an equivalent circuit, it's not really, I wasn't really sure how to write that as a method. It's more of just a way of simplify, simplifying a circuit. Um, I haven't found any sources that say it's a particular method, but node voltage method and superposition method, you can find those in the literature. So I included their names like that. Um, so let's just walk through this quick example here. So we're going to take a look at this circuit. It's got a voltage source, it's got a current source, and it's got this R1 in, in series with this parallel combination of R2 and R3. And it kind of just highlights everything um, that we want to discuss more or less, right? So you can use node voltage method on any any kind of circuit. It's just a formal way of using Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law. Well, not necessarily Ohm's law. Um, just as long as you have the current voltage characteristics of whatever devices that you're using, uh, you can use node voltage method. Superposition and Thevenin equivalent circuits, on the other hand, do require you to have linear circuits. And that usually is more uh, useful when you have just simple resistive elements. And so here I've put linear circuits. And we recall that V is IR. So this is a this is linear in R. So any kind of resistive circuit, you can use superposition or Thevenin. But just taking a step back here to the example, so we start off by applying node voltage method. Right, and and our ultimate goal here is to just show that we get the same result using node voltage as we would get using superposition. So we start off by choosing a ground um, a ground node, right? So going back to this algorithm, so we start off by defining a reference node, choosing and defining a reference node. So we start off and we say, all right, here's our ground. And then with that, we know that the voltage up here is exactly Vs, right? So we go from ground and we go through this voltage source up Vs, so it has to be Vs there. And so we now have that. Our next step is to label our unknown nodes and unknown currents, and I think voltages as well. No, so just the unknown node voltages. So here is right, this node up here is our only unknown node voltage, we know that this is ground. So this is at a voltage of zero. So then what I like to do, right? So we have this IS going in to the node and we've got another, we've got our voltage source. And this voltage source is probably going to be applying power, supplying power to the circuit. So let's just define current through R1 here, let's call it I1. And let's just say that these two resistors are the return path. And this direction of current is completely arbitrary. Um, if you follow Kirchhoff's current law accordingly, <clears throat> appropriately, then uh, you should end up at the same results no matter which way you define your current. And so this is node A, and it's at the voltage of VA, I guess, there. 
right? Um, so we define our current A is our unknown node. I1 is going through R1 into A, right? So it's going into this node A. Uh, I2 is going through R2 and it's coming out of node A right? and back into ground. And the same with R3 here. It's going, coming out of node A through R3 back to ground. And like I said, that's completely arbitrary. The direction, you just have to make sure that you're consistent when you um, come up with the unknown currents. All right, so what I like to do is I say I1, well, just in general, whenever you're applying this node voltage method, you can now start to, once you've defined all the currents, you have to write out what they are. So we have the node voltages, we have the current directions, what I like to go do is go from the base of the the, uh, the little tail here, or the little arrow, the base of the arrow, right? So we go, we start with VS, and we're going down to VA, right? So we take that difference, VS minus VA, and we divide by R1, right? So VS minus VA is the voltage drop across R1, although VA at this time is unknown, but we can still write it out, write, write an expression for it. So we take Vs minus Va, because we go from the base of this arrow to the tip. And now to write out I2, right, we take, we go from the base to the tip, Va minus zero divided by R2, right? V divided by R is current. And that gives us the, an expression for I2 and for I3. Uh, similarly. Now that we have our currents defined, and so we have a, our list of our unknown currents here, we use KCL um, at, at this unknown node, right? So we take I1 is going in, IS is going in, so we can just add those together and subtract off the ones that are coming out. So IS plus I1 minus I2 minus I3 is zero. Right, so KCL says what goes in must come out. And that's the same as adding the ones that go in and subtracting off the ones that come out. And basically we just, um, we write out the KCL, we expand it with the equations that we just found. And we want to get this, we want to separate our unknown, right? So we get this VA alone by itself here. Uh, we add it over. We add it over, we divide, we define this as our conductance matrix. Right, so this one by R1 plus one by R2 plus one by R3. And that allows us to come up with an expression for VA as the inverse of the conductance matrix times this IS plus uh, VS by R1. Um, so with this VA, right, we no longer have any unknowns, this is a, a an expression that we can evaluate because Vs is something that's given, all the resistances are given, this current source is given. All right, and then from this, we can then go on to find the, all the currents, or sorry, yeah, all the currents um, and the voltage, right? Because from here we can find the voltage, we can find VA, and then we can find all the currents. So that uh, is just how you would go about applying the node voltage method. And this is kind of simple because we only have one unknown, but in general, however many unknowns that you have is how many equations that your system will have. And I think you'll probably go into it uh, more during lecture on how to you know set up the system of equations and solve that um so then we talk about superposition method and what superposition method says is hey we can take a look we can solve this circuit by looking at one source at a time and so we're looking for the voltage here, right? We call this VA. We're, we're 
looking for that voltage. And since this is a voltage, right, so we set the two sources to zero. So we set their voltage to zero. And by setting Vs, we can start off one by one at a time, right? So we need to find Va, which by superposition theorem is going to be the sum of Va at um, with one source applied at a time. So when we set, so we have these two sources, right? We've got our voltage source, we've got our current source. We just say that's going to be Va1 plus Va2. And we're going to uh, start off by zeroing out Vs. And when there's zero volts applied, right? So when we have a voltage source and it's zero volts, well, that's really the same as just a, um, a short. It's a line, basically. So this is the circuit that we end up analyzing. For VA1, so this is VA1 here. And when we short out a current source, well, that's a little bit different, right? So I, the current, is V by R. So uh, if there's zero volts across this, then we're not supplying, there's no current flowing through there, right? So um, when we short, when we zero out a current source is just going to be an open. Right, because when there's an open, there's no current flowing through it. Open this guy. And then we solve this circuit and we figure out what VA2 is here. And by superposition, uh, superposition, we have that the VA, due to both of these sources, is going to be the sum of these individual responses. And again, this only works for linear circuits, right? So when we have um, just a resistive network, mostly. So you should be able to go through and confirm um, that superposition method does in fact yield a similar result, the same result as uh, if we were to use node voltage method, but I've I've included some um, some steps here, but it's missing right the the jump from from here right this RS R two in parallel with R three divided by R one plus R two in parallel with R three to this uh, clean VS was uh, took me a couple a couple tries actually, but it does in fact work. Uh, right, so then we conclude that it's the same as the node voltage method, and in practice, right, you would you would just use one of these. But if you wanted kind of a, a sanity check to double check your results, they should yield the same thing, uh, assuming that your circuit is linear. But node voltage will work uh, regardless if it's linear or not, right? Uh, so here's the procedure. I'm not gonna go into it too much right now. Um, it's very similar to last week, except this week we're using two power supplies and we're looking at a model for a uh, residential power distribution circuit. So it's R1, R2, and R3, kind of model the large electric lines uh, these are the transmission line resistances. R4 and R5, these are loads. And we're taking a look, look at the case where we have an unbalanced load, right? So R2, R4 is 40 ohms. And R5 is, I think I have a typo somewhere. I think R5 is supposed to be. R1 is R3, R2, R4. Yeah, I want to say R5 is probably supposed to be 30 ohms. Um, so I'll go back and fix that. And R6 is our much is our high energy load. So these are low energy loads. They only use a single uh, 
power, right? So in practice, this would be like the 120 volts AC coming out of your wall, um, whereas larger appliances use a 240 line, um, such as washers and, and dryers, right? Whatever uses much more power. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to say here. I just, I'm going to fix this to R5. But thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video.